Hello. Husky's back again with more Vancouver Canucks GM mode franchise mode commentary. Uh, last video we started off uh, year two. Uh, we've been, I'd say, fairly impressive so far considering how season one went. We haven't had the great, I mean, we haven't had a full turnover yet. Um, I'm debating what to do in this video because... Uh, the trade deadline's coming up, and now I don't know if I want to do that strictly as its own video, because I spent the morning today, this video is going up a little later than usual, uh, there were people over today and very loud, couldn't record, um, but I spent the morning scouting out possible acquisitions to make, um, I know the name that one person wants to hear the most is Tyler Johnson, and he will be, he's going to be my main target. He makes the most sense, he doesn't have that bad of a salary after being re-signed, he's a two-way forward, he's elite, he's 87 overall, he's 27 years old, 25 points in, I think we're at 30 games, 6.6 .6 over 4, it's a little high, but he's going to be the first line center, ideally, he'll be the first line center. Um, in addition to him, there was the, hey, come on, go back, um, the idea of trading Gabranson for a two-way defenseman and letting Subban come up as the offensive defenseman. Uh, the defenseman I found the best fit would be Josh Morrissey of Winnipeg. Uh, he's a two-way defender, 86 overall, he's 22, he's got low elite potential, but he's already an 86. Um, he's got really good offensive stats, his defensive stats are... Rather impressive as well. Um, I'm going to have to re-sign him this year. But he'll want like five or something. And with the only issue with making these trades is I'm dumping a lot of cap and not bringing so much of it back. So in the, uh, in the experiments I was doing this morning, uh, I struggled to hit the cap floor. Like if you look at my salary, I have 17 million in cap space. The cap floor, I believe, is 18.7. I have to have more than that, or I have to have less than that free in order to make these trades. In order to make my roster fit how I want it to. Um, so it was Morrissey, Tyler Johnson, and I know Max Domi was mentioned, but also somebody I found for who's a little cheaper in terms of trade value is uh, Sam Bennett. He's 21 years old, low elite potential. Uh, he's already in 85. He's a playmaking center. He'd be a good two-line center. Second-line center, sorry. Or even a first-line center if he progresses better. And I'd have a one-two punch of Johnson and Bennett. Or, I go after... I went past him. Columbus is second-line center currently. I think it's Alex? Yeah, I, I, I think so. Alex Alexander Winberg. He's 23. He's got a, his offense is definitely more of a playmaking style. Good faceoffs, great offensive awareness, uh, good puck skills, good skating. His shooting's a little low in comparison to Sam Bennett. So I am debating just simming this video, keeping the video as a short length, and then doing the trades in the next video. Um, I would record both of them now, so any advice you give on this first video won't kick into effect until um, probably either the playoff time that if we get there or the off season. So keep that in mind. Um, other than that, I don't really think there was much. Of the here, I'll go ahead and I'll send to the trade line and I'll talk about it more. Um, Tyler Johnson. The main piece for Tyler Johnson will be Louis Erickson. He's got the highest trade value. It's the easiest return. It keeps the salary kind of close. The big issue is going to be Sedin. Because Sedin makes $7 million, and he's a lot of my cap space, uh, something somebody else wanted to see is progression, which I can show a little bit after the... Uh, we'll send to the 14th. And I'll uh, take a look at progression for players so far. But the Sedin trade... Oh, God damn it! He's the only person... March 15th? Fuck, that kills Demko's progression. He misses two months. Fuck. Oh, wait, I, I changed this. Why did this go back? 
I wanted uh, this guy on the first line instead. Playmaker, sniper, two way forward. Hit anyone offensive awareness? Yeah, that's fine. Fuck, that really sucks. That, uh. Hopefully, that doesn't hurt his progression too much going forward. Yeah, two months. Man, that sucks. He had an injury stint at the start of the year, too. But back to what I was saying. All these guys that I want to bring in Domi, Bennett, Winberg, Morrissey, none of them have anything past entry level contracts. So, making a trade for Sedin um, is going to put me in a tough spot. I don't care about trade offers, I'm going to be the one making trades. Simply because of what I need to get back in return to stay above the cap floor. Um, I'll probably have to bring back a player of worth that's a low overall, but a high salary. Basically a salary dump, because I need to stay above the cap. I need to pull an Arizona Coyote. I need to bring in a Pavel Datsuk or a Chris Pronger. I need to bring in a contract, not so much as a player. Um, man, we suck this month. We have one win. What the hell? We were doing good. What the f- <laughs> Shit, that's fine. It's fine. Growing pains. Um, so I need to figure out something to do, because in order to get Josh Morrissey from Winnipeg, um, I think that's the Sedin trade? No, Sedin would be for Winberg or Bennett. I mean, you know, I might... I might hold off on doing that second video until I hear some feedback. Mostly because of the Winberg and uh, Bennett idea. I'm sold on Morrissey and uh, Johnson. Those are my two main targets. Those are two guys I'm going to go after. Um, I also might trade Ryan Miller to bring in a not a goalie that's not so much better, but a goalie with a higher contract. Because Miller only makes 1.8. Markstrom makes 3.4. So if I bring in a goalie with a higher contract... That allows me to get away with some of these trades for entry-level deals. But yeah, I think I'll... Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. I'll record this video today, being New Year's Eve. Happy New Year's to everybody. Um, and I'll look for some feedback on Sam Bennett or Alexander Winberg. Venberg, Winberg. Alright, now the first thing I want to show you is... Is it in managed contracts or is it in managed rosters? I think it's in managed rosters. Yeah, it's in managed rosters. Mm, excuse me. There's a there's a progress report. Yeah, here it is. I always forget this is here, but this gives a this shows what um who's grown and how. So the NHL had we haven't had a great deal of growth in the NHL, but we have had. Varanin's, uh, what's going up on him? The slap shot power has gone up, his balance and acceleration, and that was it? Just those three? Yeah, okay. Vertanen, hand-eye, defensive awareness, nice, I like that. And body checking, so he's, you know, Gabranson, ooh, he's losing offensive categories. Losing a lot of shooting categories. He's gaining speed and endurance. Alright, interesting. He's a minus 17. Holy shit. Yeah, he's... Ryan Miller. Oh, boy. Ryan Miller is, uh... He's tanking pretty hard here. What got better? Agility got better. Five holes stayed the same. Oh, five holes getting worse. Oh, boy. Nobody else has really had any key progression in the NHL so far. I know a lot of the progression happens in the off season, but some of it does occur during the regular season. I'm just surprised that it's not more. Well, I guess it doesn't show morale growth. The wrist shot power, defensive awareness. So he's got some good stats that go up thanks to his morale. I think Sebastian Ajo is going to end, I'm going to end up changing him to be a playmaker. Because if I look at his stats, I, it's not going to show me. Well, I can do it here. Uh, his passing is decent, his hand eye is decent. Um, his offensive awareness could be better. 
His shot's also not the greatest. Like, he doesn't overwhelm you in any categories, but he's got strong two-way talents, including decent face-offs. So he might be a guy that ends up getting actually changed with two-way forward. I'll have to see, because his defense is rather good for being a sniper. Yeah, that's something to think about. Where's uh, Dvorak? Uh, yeah, Dvorak's definitely got a much more higher offensive. Him and Varanin. Varanin. Varanin's got awesome puck skills. And a really good shot. And the slap shot got better. No defense, though. This is a straight offense. Well, he's got good stick checking. So, I mean, he's not a liability defensively by any means. Alright, now, I think the AHL's where all the... Yeah, the AHL's where the growth is. So... He's already up to an 84. Now, I have no idea how to say his last name, and I never will pronounce it correctly, so he's just gonna be Oli. Oli? Sorry, Oli. He's up to an 84. He's, uh, he's playing in the CHL right now. Offensive categories are through the roof so far. Offensive awareness going up. His shot's getting nastier. Defensive stats are only getting better. Speed, his skating's getting stronger. Man, he's just... He's 19 years old, he's already 80, 84 overall. He's already better than the entire time that he spent in my Minnesota GM commentary. Please excuse the water bottle, by the way. Very thirsty today. Alright, so in addition to him... It's Cahill, kid, I think I drafted this season... Decent puck skills, decent offensive awareness, shooting. So he might be, he'll be a serviceable first line, kind of. Um, the big one I want to look at, really, Sprong has only had nine. He started as a 76, he's currently a 77. I wonder if changing that right winger to a two-way forward will help him. Shooting has gotten better. Stick checking has gotten better. Now what I'm interested in is I can see... Ollie's stats? Oh, there's Patrick. Why can't I see... Why, why doesn't Owen Patrick have any... What, I can see this kid's. Huh. Interesting. Don't tell me they've got him benched in the CHL. God, he's already got 90 slap shot power. He's gonna be disgusting. Hopefully he gets better than he was, because I think he capped out at an 84 in my other one. Um... This run in, oh, what's he, he's actually, oh, he's 78 across the board. Sprong's a 77. I mean, he's, he's growing at least. He's got, it's showing. Uh, Demko, he's a 78. This sucks, he's only played 15 games this season. <laughs> That's really a shame. What are his stats? His stats are good, too. Benny the Villain, he's doing all right. Yeah, I was really hoping Sprong would be up here with the rest of these guys. Um, what's my what's Subban's thing look like? Nothing, huh? He's up one, so it must be morale. Yeah, it's all morale. Offensive awareness, slap shot, skating stuff. So Subban should be a serviceable defenseman next year. Anybody else having a big? Oh man, this uh this kid's really. Progressing well. Top 9, 18 year old. Isn't this the kid I drafted for his name? Or did I trade for this guy? It doesn't show me on the screen. Still, he's... He's looking real good. Cahill's looking good. 17 different things have improved. All of his skating's improving. So I've... I'm, I'm impressed with some of the growth down here. I would like Sprong to... Be a little more noticeable. But, what are you going to do? Alright, so we're at 15 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and... Send to the trade deadline. And, I think I'm going to call the video there. Well, let's see. Well, let's send to the 28th. <laughs> Fractured jaw. Well, he's only missing a little while. He's missing a week. Erickson sitting in Barshi. Didn't I have that changed? I thought, did my rosters get messed up? Or my lines? I might have fucked them up with, uh... No, I think I left that how it is. 
sniper, playmaker, playmaker. Actually, I think I might have done this. Bring Jacob. Defense, Hutton, Gabranson, Treminkin, Tanev, Kempney, Spiza. See, I replaced him in all lines. Why does it not replace him here? Whatever. We'll just put Louis there. I don't think Louis on a different pair. No, we're good. Twenty-five, twenty-three, and nine. So we've definitely kind of fallen off the rails here a little bit. AHL teams fucking still going strong. Thirty, seventeen, and five. All right, and I bring them right back in the lineup. Awesome. Really wish the guys I want to play the most would stop getting hurt. Uh, yeah, I'm putting him back on the second line. So two snipers, and mm, I don't know if I like that. I think I'm actually going to put Dvorak down and bring Jake up. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Erickson, Horvat, and Barshi. I think Barshi's going to be the one guy in this top six that stays. I'm a fan of his, uh, I'm a fan of his skill set. Oh, he's another sniper, so, I don't know, maybe he could, maybe I can move him into, maybe I trade Barshi for, maybe I include him in one of the Sam, in the Sam Bennett or Max Domi deal. Simply for just, with all the snipers I've added on. For nothing wins, Let's see if we can with these last two wins. Alright, I'm at 17 minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna... I'm gonna do the trade deadline next video. So, like I said, as this comes to an end, um, Tyler Johnson and Josh Morris here are the two that I'm sold on and I'm going to make moves for. Um, the ones that I have not made a decision on yet are Max Domi, Verizona, Sam Bennett of Calgary, Alexander Winberg of Columbus... If there's anybody else you can think of besides those three players, let me know, and I'll take a look at them. Um, I'm not opposed to trading anybody. Um, the way that I have it figured out is Louis Erickson goes for Tyler Johnson, Gabranson goes for Morrissey, and then Sedin is worked into one of those entry-level deal trades. And also Miller, possibly for an upgrade, just for cap relief. Um, before I end this, let's take a look at stats. See how our guys are doing. Bo, Hor Bo Horvat leading the team in points. 44 points in 61 games. Not very terribly impressive. Jake for 10 and 35. Run in 35. I mean, pass in the puck. Dvorak, 34. Aho, 30. So they're all half a point per game players. I mean, none of them are playing on the first line, so this is pretty much what I expect. They're all pluses. I mean, I can't ask for much more than that. Um, take a look at the, uh, see if Sprong's, alright, Sprong's coming alive, making that, uh, putting that two-way forward on his wing really seems to have helped his goal scoring, moving ruled in down to the second line, so who did I bring up, I brought up Peltier, no, a Sweat, that's what I brought up. So yeah, they're doing, they're doing work. Subban's got 25 points, 12 goals. Peltier's got 19, Castle's 17. I'd like this Castle's guy to progress too. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I'm liking this, liking this 54 points in 52 games we got going here. This Oliver dude's really kicking ass. Glad he's working out. Although I see like he's taking, well, that's fine though, that's fine. Is there anybody else that's really standing out here that... I'm not expecting to. Not really. Magna's got 10 goals. Yeah, and that's pretty normal. And then goalies obviously are rough with them. Kobe and Hurt. He's 9 2 and 1 with a 203, but he's not playing because injuries. 
Damn, that's probably going to push his NHL debut back a season. That sucks. Alright, where are we at standings-wise? 20 minutes, alright. We are currently two points out of the Pacific playoff. Playoff positions. And as for, it's going to have to be a... Well... St. Louis is 69 points, and they're the second wild card. So we're four points out of the wild card and two points out of the division. So I can see us squeaking into the playoffs if we stay healthy here and we, we make these changes going into the trade deadline. But yeah, like I said, I'd love to hear your opinion on Alexander Winberg, Sam Bennett, or Max Domi. Those are the three question marks I have. And expect to see all those trades in the next video. And like I said before, I'm going to go back on that... Uh, Recording two videos, I'm gonna wait and record the trade day, the the trade deadline video, either Sunday or Monday, so it gives some feed time for feedback. But yeah, as always, if you enjoy the video, leave a like. It helps me see that people enjoy the content. Um, comment as always, love to interact. Uh, subscribe to the channel to see when the videos go up. This one's going up a little later than usual. Like I said, other people here this morning. It was very loud. Very obnoxious, so. But these videos are still every other day. Um, except when we get to the playoffs, I made the decision that playoff rounds are going to be each day. And when we get to the playoffs, eventually. But yeah, let me know what you think of the trade options, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.